I'm Scott Allen Miller, and we're going to do another episode. I, I know, right? But we're going to do another episode about flushing toilet paper, and we're going to talk about flushing toilet paper around the world, because this is actually a topic I think people don't understand or appreciate or really really grasp very well. So I want to I wanna go into this a bit because it's, it's pretty important as a traveler, uh, whether you're looking at traveling around the world, just being like a traveler, a tourist, or if you're looking at moving to somewhere outside of the flushing toilet zone, understanding how this plays in, what it means, a lot, it just, it's important. So bear with me. I know it's a weird topic, but it's also an interesting one. I think most people are kind of like, okay, I don't, I don't like not being able to flush toilet paper, but I am interested in hearing about it. So let's hear about it. So first of all, let's define what we mean by being able to flush toilet paper, because this alone throws a lot of people off. Obviously, when we say that a country allows you or doesn't allow you to flush toilet paper, we don't mean that you cannot flush toilet paper. If you were to take paper and put it into a toilet and hit the flush, it would normally flush in any country anywhere. That is just like, obviously, right? This is just physics. It's like, can you flip a coin in, in this country? Yes, if you take a coin and flick it with your finger, it's going to flip. Could you have a law that says you're not allowed to do that? Of course, right? But so we have to we have to kind of define. So with flushing toilet paper, I don't know of any country where it's outlawed. And it's not really a thing done at a country level, but we normally discuss it that way. And what it is, is that in certain regions or cultures, there are either traditions or physical needs to treat toilets differently. And in places like Nicaragua that are very small, it's relatively easy to lump them together as a single country. And in places that are really large, it gets a lot more difficult, uh, say in Italy or Spain, where the countries are just many times the size of Nicaragua. Um, but even then, we tend to lump it as a country. The United States, for example, even though it's many, many, many times the size of Nicaragua, we treat it as a single entity in that way. And, and so when we say that in the United States, you can flush toilet paper, what we mean is that in almost all cases, you are able to flush toilet paper without violating a social uh, construct where you are, uh, by the people who are in charge, expected not to do so. Uh, and you are not pushing the septic uh, systems beyond their expected capacity. So it's a combination of things and it's a very soft def definition, right? And when we say a place like Nicaragua, you can't flush toilet paper. We mean that in the majority of situations, not ones that you build yourself or contrive. Uh, the majority of people will expect that you do not flush toilet paper, whether it's by custom, courtesy, or necessity, because the septic, septic systems cannot handle it, or the belief thereof. That's what we mean by you can't flush toilet paper. That's the basics, right? So you can't just go to a place and say, well, I flushed. That does not tell us anything, right? That is not within the, none of that is part of that definition. So uh, understand that people will go to Nicaragua to say, I flush all the time and it doesn't cause a problem. You don't know that it doesn't cause a problem. Just like in the United States, you can't flush wipes. Of course you can flush them, right? You put them in a toilet, you flush, generally they're gonna go down. But you talk to people who maintain city sewage systems and they'll tell you those are a problem and they can't be flushed right because a crew has to go in and dig it out the system is not designed to handle them and it doesn't handle them they have to manually dig them out in huge piles it's a big problem go watch adam ruins everything and he'll talk about that he's got a great episode about how they don't work but people believe they do and just because something says flushable on it means nothing that is not up to them that is up to the septic system not to the manufacturer of some third-party product that's just that's intentionally is what we call ask holing, right? Going to someone who's obviously not the person with the answer and asking them. Not that anyone has done that, but if they were, that is what that is. Um, that is the thing we see in business a lot. If you don't like the answer from your IT team, they will call a vendor who sells a product and ask if they can do something bad. The vendor has no skin in the game, is not responsible in any way. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear because you're paying them to tell you whatever you want, they want, you want to hear. They're salespeople and they have no responsibility to give you the correct answer, right? Your IT team's job is to give you the correct answer. So in this case, think of it that way. Your toilet paper vendor cannot tell you. They can tell you that they designed it, maybe, to dissolve in water eventually. That's not the same. But, okay, so all that being said, when you look, so I went, there's a, there's a great resource online that talks about what you can flush where in the world. Um, and they're kind of the definitive source as best as anyone is. Remember, this is not actually at a national level. It's not actually at a government level. 
This is done at an individual septic level. It could be municipality, it can be culture, it can be a lot of things. So it's hard to define when you can and can't flush toilet paper. In every country on earth, if you go to a resort, chances are you can flush because they are taking care of the problem for you one way or another, even if they don't have a septic that can handle it. In almost any country, if you live on a beach, you either have to have some way of whisking it away or you can't deal with it. It doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or not. There are parts of the U.S. on islands or on the beaches that they can't handle it either. It's just we don't normally talk about it because they know they're on a beach and have a weird thing. It's also important to note because the question came up, well, I'm sure you can build your own. Well, can't you just build your own septic and deal with it that way? Of course you can in any country. If you're not going to deal with the country's septic systems and you're going to do your own, you can build anything you want. You can get one that launches it into space if you want. Like that's, it's a weird way to look at it. Obviously that's not what we mean, but it is important uh, to note that in the majority of cases, let's talk about Nicaragua where I am right now. Here, when people move to Nicaragua, there's a couple major things. One is most people who move here move to a city. And most of those cities in this case are colonial. So they have really old infrastructure and very little capability to change that infrastructure. So when they say that things can't handle it, they mean it, right? This is not a joke. This is not a, oh, we're just, it's some historic thing and we don't understand how to flush it. That is not the case. They have old systems that they really can't update. And this doesn't affect the United States in the same way. Right, the U.S. has much bigger populations, and it doesn't have these old colonial cities. They're able to go underground and change what's underneath the city if they want to, and they have. That's why you don't run into these problems in places like the U.S., but Nicaragua is maintaining some seriously old colonial cities, and they have to deal with things that you don't have to deal with in younger countries. A lot of Europe is the same way. A lot of Asia is the same way. So these are challenges that you may not be used to depending on where you're coming from. So they're serious. When they say their city can't handle it, yeah, if you go into a house in the city and just start flushing toilet paper, no one's going to notice that it's you. But somewhere the city is going to have to deal with that eventually because their septic systems, their, their sewage systems can't handle it. Now, also, in a lot of these places, like Leon, there is no central sewage system. Every house has stacks under it. So you may be the one who has to deal with it, but it will be the you know, person that you rent from or very likely it will be the next person who rents that house because it takes time before the damage is done. So you have to be aware that just because you're able to physically flush it does not in any way imply that you're able to flush. That is not what it means, right? When people say you can't flush, they don't mean that it won't go down at that moment. They mean that the system can't handle it long term. So the majority of people are moving to cities in Nicaragua, of people who move to Nicaragua. That's where they're going. Of those that don't move to the city, the vast majority of them move to the beach. These are the two situations where there's no easy way to fix it. And even if you buy and build your own place in either of those locations, you still can't fix it because you don't have enough space under a city lot to, under normal circumstances to put in enough of a septic system to deal with that. And on the beach, it's too shallow because of the water table. You can't deal with it there. Trust me, I own places on the beach. No, you cannot build your own system to deal with it. If you want to buy another place far off the beach and put in a public water system that pulls it out to that other location, maybe, okay, that's a possibility, but you're not very realistic, right? So saying, can't you just build your own doesn't really solve the real world problems of no, you actually can't in most situations that are where people really live. You cannot just build a new septic system and deal with it. It doesn't work that way. If you were to buy a farm out in the country in Nicaragua, and you want to put in a giant septic system of your own, of course, if you have lots of land and very low volume, you can solve things that way. That is an option, but it applies to effectively no one. It's basically the saying the same as, well, if you move somewhere else, wouldn't it solve the problem? Yes. So that's when you're dealing with where people actually want to live, it changes how things actually work. Now, one of the things that makes this confusing is that very often people coming from the United States or other places tend to come to these countries and go into enclaves or tourist zones. And quite often, those zones find some way to deal with it as a group so that tourists don't necessarily notice the problem. And that's fine and great and nothing wrong with that. But it's important to note that when you do that, you're not actually experiencing the country and saying that, but there's places where you can flush. Of course, there's always some place where you can flush somebody will always put in a system that allows you to flush. Yes, but <laughs> those are enclaves, those are special cases, and every country has them. And in no way, again, does that imply that as a country, as a location, that it doesn't have the issue that you can't 
flush. You can't use those examples because in every country you can find an example where you can't flush and we don't go to special island situations in the United States and say the US you can't flush, that would be silly. So don't, we don't do the same in reverse. When we're talking about flushing, the vast majority of the world does not flush toilet paper at this same level where we're talking about what culture and everything allows you to do. So, and this isn't a thing about rich or poor. Some of the richest countries in the region like Panama and Costa Rica also have the issue that you cannot flush toilet paper there on any scale. Cities like San Jose, one of the richest in the entire region, has stacks, not a uh, sewage system, mostly because of the mountains. And this is something that's worth noting. Places like the United States, Canada, Germany, and a lot of the places that have flushing toilet paper as an option, they exist where the majority of their population does not live on mountains, they don't live on beaches, uh, and they, they have quite a bit of open space and they don't have colonial cities. This combination changes everything because almost all of the world is the opposite. They have old cities, they live in mountainous terrain, they tend to be towards beaches and rivers, places with different water tables, and they have different challenges than the areas that flush. So if you look at a world map of where you can flush and where you can't, the places that can flush are very limited to temperate climates in the north with low mountainous terrain uh, with relatively large space for homes so they're able to do these things without a lot of these ancient cities in the way. The places like Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, where flushing is universally a problem, they have often terrain and historical reasons that cause it to be a problem. They also have often higher population densities or at least cities with big population densities that create larger problems. And obviously, poverty contributes. If you have enough money, it's easy to solve some of these issues. Uh, Saudi Arabia or uh, the UAE, for example, may have highly dense cities surrounded by really tough terrain near beaches and still be able to solve them because they're building brand new cities and throwing lots of money at it. Obviously, things like that will solve the problem. That's not practical in the majority of the world. Even super rich countries like Panama can't just do that to solve the problem universally, which is why places like Panama and Costa Rica don't do it. Now, Another point that comes up is, isn't that gross? Isn't that unhygienic? No, that is not true. Yeah, it's gross. I'll give you that. I hate it. Everyone hates it. Nobody doesn't flush by choice. Everybody hates it. It's a terrible, terrible system. From a gross perspective, from a comfort perspective, you don't want that. It's not nice, but it's necessary in the majority of the world. And it is not unhygienic. I don't know where that comes from. That is not a thing. It is perfectly hygienic. As, or it's perfectly as hygienic as flushing. Flushing is also weird. When you flush, you're just increasing the chances that someone has to go dig out a septic system. I'm from the United States. I know people have their septic systems dug out all the time because of all the toilet paper in them. So we can't pretend that that doesn't happen. I'm from New York, right? Like if that happens in New York, it happens everywhere. So you're making people go in and suck those things out with, with big pipes. You're making people go in with shovels and dig them out. That is how it gets solved. Now, some places like the US, it doesn't happen as often because you have bigger tanks or whatever, but it's still an issue. Uh, here, you have to do it all the time if you do that. And that's kind of the difference. So if you're talking about hygiene, actually that creates more of a hygiene issue than, than not flushing in many cases. But we're gonna say it's a break even because realistically it is. In both cases, you're not touching it ever again it is not a particular risk. If you actually want to increase hygiene, there's only one reasonable way to do so. It is called a bidet. And a lot of the areas that don't flush have bidets much more, a much higher percentage than the places that do flush. Places like the US and Northern Europe have a tendency to not use bidets, which a lot of the rest of the world finds really creepy because you really need one. That's how you improve hygiene. And even here in Nicaragua, I have been in houses this past week that have bidets. I cannot tell you the last time I was in a house in the United States that had a bidet. Um, I'm not saying that the percentage is that much different, but I certainly am seeing them more often in Nicaragua than in the United States. Not to say that either is, is often, but in Southern Europe where uh, flushing is also not an option, bidets are almost universal. And so that's where hygiene actually comes into play. You want to get away from using so much toilet paper altogether and use water and soap. That is the actual answer to hygiene concerns, and those are real. So I highly suggest that we learn how to use bidets. Uh, but if you want to use things like wipes, which kind of mimic a bidet to some degree without actually having to have one, which is more viable for travel, then yes, 
that's something you can do. And nowhere can you flush wipes. I know people will say, but I can. I can do. I can go home and flush. Not according to people who research sewage systems in the United States. You can never flush them, right? So again, it, you can redefine or define however you want what it means to be able to flush. But in the definition that everyone uses when we say we can or can't flush, you cannot flush wipes anywhere. So you're already throwing them away instead of flushing them or else you're causing septic problems. So you're in the same boat, but at least the hygiene is better than toilet paper. One of the challenges we have when we talk about places and, and flushing and all that is that um, the same argument, right? Well, can't you just build your own place and put in where, of course, if it's your house, you have lots of options, but it's not really what we mean. We mean when you're in a country. So here in Nicaragua, I can easily have a house where I can flush my toilet paper. That's not a particular problem. Um, I can't buy a pre-existing house very easily that would allow me to do that. I can't live in a lot of particular cities to do that. But if that was my goal, solving it would not be particularly hard. I could easily go out to one of the rural villages, get a house somewhere outside of the downtown area and have lots of space and put in any septic I want. Yes, no problem. Where you run into problems is when you start talking about, well, I want to be able to go to a hotel. Well, nearly every hotel in the country you can't flush. Well, I want to, I want to travel. I want to be able to use the bathroom at a bus stop, at a gas station, at someone's home, at a restaurant. None of those are going to allow you to flush here in Nicaragua or in any country in the region. And yes, there's exceptions. You go to Cancun in Mexico, they have a whole infrastructure to deal with that. But the majority of Mexico, all the way down to Tierra del Fuego, all of it is non-flush. The obvious exception of Chile. So, if you want to be able to travel in that region or in nearly any of Africa or in nearly any of Asia or in a, more than half of Europe, you are going to be stuck not being able to flush or you're going to have to pay an extreme premium and somehow teleport from expensive resort hotel to another expensive resort hotel without ever needing to use the bathroom in between in order to exist in this flushable bubble. That's where it gets challenging. When we talk about coming to a country, any country, we don't want to be limited by the fact that we need certain amenities that are not standard. In some cases, it's unavoidable. Obviously, when you come to Latin America, we would all like to be able to flush. We simply can't without being super limited to where we go. So we say it is a non-flushing region. That's, but that's the kind of stuff, if you say, well, I can solve it by building a thing, you're ignoring that the desire is not to be tra a prisoner in your own house because of your bathroom, right? Just so you can have a contrived, yes, I'm able to flush. So that, that's a big thing, right? When I lived in Panama, yes, my house was able to flush. I lived in a resort style, brand new condo in a high rise. Yeah, we were able to flush toilet paper. Big surprise, they have a giant system for dealing with it and loads of land around it. But I couldn't go anywhere in Panama without having to deal with a non-flush system because I was in a unique bubble for my home. Now, if you only want to solve it for your day-to-day -day at home and you don't care about when you're traveling and stuff, then great, you can do that. And if I was to build a house even here in Nicaragua, of course I would build a septic system that can handle it, obviously, because no one's pretending it isn't disgusting, right? We hate it. It's inconvenient to an extreme degree. Everyone agrees on that. We wish we could solve it, but realistically, you can't, right? And, and it's important not to bring an attitude from other regions and be like, well, this is what something people should do. It's not about should or shouldn't, right? That does not apply to something like this. You may say, I don't like it. I don't like it either. But either you have to live with it or you have to change what you're able to change for you personally. You can't change everyone else. Like, that's not a thing. And yes, for some people, it's a really important thing, and that's fine. It is a really important thing for a lot of people. It's going to limit where you can go, basically, to high-cost uh, North America, U.S., Canada, and Northern Europe. Those are the only regions in the world where you don't have this problem. The only. There are no exceptions. Chile. Chile is an exception. There's a couple really, really isolated exceptions. There's no general area exception, right? Argentina is non-flush. Brazil you know, all these giant countries and rich countries, right? They, Hola. <laughs> um, these are, it's just, you can't live there and have access to everything. You, you will have to live in a bubble in any of those countries to be able to avoid the non-flush issue. Um, so that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind that that's really what we're talking about. When you go to visit your neighbors, when you go to stay in a hotel, all those things, do you get to flush? or not. Your own home is always up to you if you own your septic system and you're in a position to modify it. It's a lot of ifs, 
right? And you kind of have to accept that it's going to be a challenge. And it is a challenge, and it's awful, and I hate it. But you know what? You actually do, for the most part, get used to it. You never get completely used to it, but you do mostly get used to it. And it becomes a much more minor thing once you become comfortable because it just isn't something that, you know, it's not unique to you. Every single person has to deal with it every day. And so it is what it is. And people just get over it um, as, much, as much as they can. Yeah. So I want to look at the world map because I, there's this great resource that shows a map of where you can flush around the world. And it's worth looking at because it really is telling that in Latin America, for example, 16 out of 17 countries do not flush. And the only one that does flush is a very small country population wise. So the big ones like Mexico and Brazil, Brazil, first of all, is more than 50% of all the population of South America. So even if it was the only one in South America that didn't flush, that would mean the majority don't flush. Um, uh, with Argentina and Colombia being the other big populations down there, but basically everybody's non flush in the region and Africa and Southeast Asia. So, so it's really noticeable North America, U S and Canada, not Mexico, right? And some of these places are marked as sometimes, like it depends. Uh, and that's true. That's true anywhere though. It's just how much it depends is the question. And Mexico, because of their resort areas, they inch towards, yes, you can flush, but Mexico City, you cannot. Merida and the Yucatan, you cannot. So areas that are like the resort areas, lots of tourists and uh, similar weather, similar terrain, it is just the tourist areas specifically have done it because they're catering to North American tourists. Nothing wrong with that. Again, great for Americans to have a place to go where they know they can live in that bubble and great for Mexico to have made that investment. But it's only for those regions. The majority of Mexico, real Mexico, if you want to go live in Mexico and experience Mexico as a Mexican, you can't flush. Right. And they hate it. I've spoken to Mexicans. They're like, yeah, you can't flush and we hate it. Um, and you know, they know it's not like you grow up with it and go, Oh, is this, this is great. No, they hate it. Right. It's just, it is what it is. So it's not something you can really solve. Um, you can solve it at home if it's something that's really big for you. Overall though, I think it's important to say for some people, it's going to be a showstopper, right? If you don't, if you don't like flushing toilet paper, Latin America is just off the table for you as is most of the world. Basically any place that's affordable goes away for unfortunate reasons. And almost any place with really good oceanfront also goes away, right? Chile being a notable exception, a very notable exception, but also extremely far away and not that cheap, right? It's a very large economy, tends to be a relatively expensive country uh, with a low population. So that's, and that's what makes it the way that it is. Uh, and it's also, you'll notice a colder climate for whatever reason, colder climates make it easier to flush. But when you look at the map, North Central Europe is about it other than the US and Canada. And obviously the US and Canada are primarily populated from that zone, right? So it's a single cultural zone that happens to be spread across two continents, but only part of two continents. And that's the only places where flushing is normal. And it's weird because if you're coming from one of those zones, especially the US where, where you tend to be more insular than if you're coming from say Germany, Germans tend to be very exposed to France and Italy and Spain and other regions. And so they have a very good context of we do this, they do that, we're different. The United States tends to be very insular and Canada to a lesser degree. And so there has a t there's a tendency to be like, well, this is how everyone should do it because I've never heard of anything else. Why would you not flush, right? And and that cultural difference is, is sometimes really severe. So it's important, especially as someone coming from the US or Canada, to really understand that flushing is not the norm. It is not the expectation. It is not, if you're gonna travel, something you're going to be able to do broadly um, without putting in an awful lot of effort and significantly curtailing your ability to go places. If you feel that flushing is something you have to have, you are guaranteed to either have to live in a high cost location, such as Germany, England, the United States, or Canada, or that when you go to low cost locations, you're going to have to avoid normal travel. You aren't gonna be able to go hang out at friends' houses, just use any hotel, get in a car and road trip, go to restaurants and use the bathroom there. All those things, if that's a showstopper for you, those are showstoppers nearly everywhere in the world. It is what it is. Uh, and everywhere else, yes, there's always gonna be some place where you can find you can flush. The majority, the flexibility is not. That universal flushing is just an extremely rare luxury that yes, I'm very thankful to have grown up with. It really did make my life better as a kid, but you know, uh, I choose to live in a region where that's not something we have. It's not that big of a deal. I don't like it, but it doesn't mean that it ruins my life or anything. You really do get mostly used to it. 
and uh, look past it very quickly. Thanks for joining me. Ask your questions below. I want to know your experiences. You know, I've been to all of those countries that, you know, I've mentioned Spain, France, Italy, you know, Greece, Romania, and in all of them, there's times where you can flush, there's times where you can't. And uh, it's just, it's something you have to learn to be flexible about uh, in a lot of cases. Also, carry wipes with you, just a general bit of advice. Often carry toilet paper with you as well as a traveler. Good things to have because just access to those things is not universal. Like and subscribe, comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee with the link down below, and I will see all of you tomorrow.